What's up, y'all? Team FTS. Um, we're here with me, Aaron, Kelsey, Jet, Ian, and it's gonna be Thomas. And we are giving our opinions on the last format starting March 2013, ending about now because the band list is about to come out. Um, a little disclaimer these videos that were each segment was made without looking at the other segments that were done. So if things are repeated, that just means we have similar opinions and we didn't copy each other. So like, comment, subscribe, check those out, just keep watching, and we might have some bloopers at the end. I'm not promising. Hey, Kelsey, what did you think of the format starting in March 2013 to now? the end of the format. What do you think about it? What are your comments and stuff? Well, the beginning of the format was basically Murmo ran, right? Yep. I didn't get really played that much then. <laughs> I was doing baseball season. But I started playing with basically Dragon and Prophecy format. And I felt like it wasn't that bad. Like everybody made a scene. You just gotta know how to play. Like good people gonna win and losers gonna lose. Like, that's, that's all I'm saying. Like, for real, man. Like, I was playing water steel during the format, and everybody was like, oh, we don't want to play this deck because everybody main deck in Maxis and Valors. Well, Valor wasn't really the problem. It's the Maxis because it makes you just stop. But I played wind-ups before I played water, so I basically knew how to – I know how to play around the Maxi. And I wasn't worried about dragons fucking on a maxi anyways. If I can go game, I'm still gonna go game because most of them don't main deck a Swiss Scarecrow. So that's how I felt about that matchup. I don't think I hated prophecies. That dick was gay. Like <laughs> you just had, you had six cards to hand, and then summon a monster that can't be killed. Cause you're just gonna fake control you. Fake lock, bitch. Like, that shit was fucking annoying as fuck when you can't special summon something. I had to summon, like, fucking gun in attack mode to try to kill a Jalgen. No, nigga, it's getting faded. <laughs> I hate that shit. I hate it. And then I get my face pushed in by, like, 5,000 attack point blue boys. Like, that shit was fucking retarded, bro. I gotta eat a chill. I gotta eat a chill. <laughs> Format was pretty good, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. It was alright. It wasn't, it wasn't as bad as everybody made it seem. Yeah, Dragons was the best deck. Okay. So what? Suck it up. <laughs> Bro. It's always the best deck. The fuck? Y'all niggas was bitching when Water was the best deck. Now y'all bitching with Dragons. Now y'all bitching against Prophecies. Just stop bitching. It's always gonna be two good ass decks. You bitch with windups. You bitch. You bitch with Dino Rabbit. You little Mac, bro. Uh, all that long you dope. Uh, it's so annoying. Stop bitching, bros. Everybody, stop it. Stop it. Just stop. All right. Do you have everything else to say about the format as a total? Oh yeah. If that ban list is real, about like fucking making a rule to kill a deck, that's fucking stupid. All right. This all right. isn't a ban list. Ban list video. It's fucking stupid. I agree. All right. That's Kelsey's input. All right. Chip time. Chip time. Okay. What's up, y'all? This is Ian's segment of the end of the format discussion video that we're doing. Once again, this is not a prediction video. This is an end of the format discussion. We're talking, guys. So from March <coughs> 2013 to now, how did you feel about life, bro? About life? Yeah, how did you feel about the Yu-Gi-Oh life that we go through every other day of whenever we play Yu-Gi-Oh? I mean, it was cool and all, you know. I did pretty well with Heroes, I feel. Then E Dragons came out. It was sad. <laughs> <laughs> Depressing. Yeah. Blood hurts everywhere. I'm sorry, bro. So, do you feel as if the three months that E Dragons were out kind of was the highlight of the format and all that good shit? The fact that when E Dragons came out, Judgment came out for Prophecy, so it made that deck more nuts. So it pretty much, the top two or three decks that were out became extremely nuts. And then the other decks that were just like Rogue and or able to do something just got shitted on. That's a very good explanation, sir. So, going into the next format, what are you wanting slash hoping for? Do you have any aspirations for greatness? To be able to get an invite to Nationals. 
That's that's all I want. Okay. Do that's you have a specific deck that you're gonna try to play with at nationals? Nope. I'm just gonna wing it. I mean at regionals, because there's a regional before the ban list. Oh, I'm gonna probably try to play with fire kings. All right, you gonna thrash some booties. I'm gonna burn some booties, but not thrash them. I'm gonna burn them. All right, bro. Do you have anything else to say on your segment of this video? Not that I can think of right now. All right. Say bye. Hey, Aaron. How did you feel about <laughs> this format? Um, I thought it was an overall a good format. That is my opinion, and I will argue it. So anyway, I think it was a good format because from March 2013 to now, it's always been there's two power decks and then rogue decks that can compete with those power decks because of one card outs, which I'll explain when I go through it. So first, the first half of the format was Mermels and Fire Fist generally, um, and a whole bunch of rogue decks like fucking Karkari OTK and Heretics and all kinds of shit. So like, deck a whole bunch of decks could compete. Um, MST was good with, against both Fire Fist and against Mermels because you chain these to their continuous spells and traps and it shits on their day. Um, I don't know, so just one card outs like that. Um, macro also is really good against them. So that's just the first half of the format, which y'all didn't see that as macro. Anyway, now we're at pa Tachyon's release and E-Dragons and fucking Soulbooks got raw as fuck. So that's what everybody's focused on. When you talk about the end of the format, that's basically what people are homing on. They just forget about the fact that Mermels were the shit for a long last time. But um, E-Dragons and Prophecies both have one card outs. Like, there's so many one card outs to these decks and people bitch about it and get mad and butt hurt. Like, if you know how to play, if you know how to play Yu-Gi-Oh, you know how to, you can beat these decks. Like, like my good friend Arthur, if y'all know him, look him up. He's raw as fuck, but he literally just plays a rogue ass shit. He plays against Stellas right now and just thrashes everyone. Not me, because I don't play that shit. But like he thrashes all these dragon decks and spellbook players and shit like that just because he knows how to play and when to use stuff. Little cards like this. Deck Lockdown, if y'all don't know what this is. Deck Lockdown is amazing. Like it says neither player can add cards from their deck to their hand or special summon from the deck. That is insane. That literally one card shuts down E Dragons and Prophecies. For two turns. And then you pounce it. Pleiades, you can bounce this back and then reuse it. Bounce this back and then you use it. That's what I'm saying. This card right here literally you win you the game, hands down. Like, people bitch so much about E Dragons. Nobody bitches about Spellbooks really, unless you're an E Dragon player, honestly. Because Spellbooks suck. They cheat. I don't know. Spellbooks, in all honesty, if they ban Jalgen, Spellbooks would be completely balanced. Judgment's a great card, but Jalgen is what the problem is. Um. But dragons are good as fuck because they have that super, honestly, super juve is what really breaks the deck. Um, they have Rhoda, which is Gold Sark. They have their, I don't know, they have more plus cards than basically anything. They plus off Rhoda and off Seven Swords really hard. So they get two new, two free cards and a, and a search with Seven Swords, and they get a monster that they can use right now with Gold Sark and another one in two turns. So both of those cards are really, really fucking good. But in all actuality, it's super juve that gives them. The, the fucking rip the nuts because they'll dish their whole hand and if they have super juve they'll get a new one so they have all the stuff that's in the grave all the monsters that's on the field and the stuff that's in their hand so that's why they're good and i'm just speaking stuff that you should know but imagine if people didn't have super juve they'd have to either not discard stuff or they'd be a bad player which a lot of dragon players just don't know how to play it. just pick up the deck and try to win with it they'll just discard their whole hand with no hand they, and they'll just use up those last things. If you live through the initial push and the resources they have, then they lose. So, I don't know. It's not that, really, it's not that bad. Like, I know I play Dragons, and y'all are probably like, who's super crit, blase, blase. But it's not hard to beat. Like, I play the Mirror all the fucking time. Like, it's really not a hard deck to beat. The hardest deck to beat, in all honesty, is fucking Dragon. Fuck that. Fuck that nigga, dog. <laughs> but, that no, but it's nigga. having two decks, two powerful decks that are easily stopped is is not bad it doesn't mean the format is bad people who say the format is bad you know, it was like as soon as tachyon was released oh this is a bad format i'm not gonna play you're a scrub in my eyes like i don't care what you say or what you think you can do like you're a scrub if you are too scared to even try to play it like, i don't want to put money into the game then pick up a fucking constellar deck an evil storm deck that shit's cheap as fuck like stop bitching about it i don't know i think the, de the format was really good because there was always there was consistently two strong decks and very simple, splashable cards that you could run in your deck to stop those decks and be competitive. And all you had to do was play your deck right, and you win. You you could beat these decks. You know what I'm saying? People topping with fucking random ass.
people top him in Dolce's and shit at Nats. Why did he even top him in Dolce's? Because he's a good player and he knows how to play with, and he knows what to stop in certain decks. That's why he tops Nats, third, top 32 at Nats. So, I don't know. He, he gets mad respect for me just because he played with the rogue ass deck like that and still top Nats, um, beating all these dragons and shit. So, that's my opinion. Um, and also, I think this card's going to be amazing next format. This isn't a next format video, and this is not a bandless prediction video, but if the top deck is Fire Fist, which is pretty pathetic. I'm gonna cry. Skill Drain. Skill Drain's real. Just saying. Rooster's all good and good and dandy. Spirit's gonna be cool. Not when Skill Drain's on the field. Anyways, so yeah, that's my opinion. I think it's pretty balanced, pretty pretty good format. Um, we haven't really had a bad format. Everybody bitches about Konami. They make such a dumb decision, but they don't. They keep the format decent. You know what I'm saying? Like, even before this, the Mermels kind of ran rampant, but they were easy to stop. If you knew what you were doing, like all you have to do is be smart with your decisions, and you can do well. That's my opinion, bro. Do you have anything else to add? Um, Imperial Iron Wall is good against both dragons and what you call it? Prophecies. Mind Drain shits on fucking dragons. Oh my god, I hate this card with a passion. Um, yeah. Uh, but um, even hopefully, like this isn't gonna happen. But hopefully, they don't hit dragons or prophecies too hard, like. Limit Jalgen, maybe? I don't know. That, that'll, I hate Jalgen. If Jalgen never existed, then Spellbooks wouldn't even be a problem for Dragons. Like, hit Dragons enough to where they'd still be, like, Tier 2, Tier 1, and then you could have four powerful decks. You'd have Mermels, Fire Fist, Dragons, and Prophecies. Four, like, Big Four format. Nobody bitched about the Big Four format, so, like, that'd be cool, in my opinion. I think that'd be awesome. So, yeah. Y'all have fun with the rest of y'all format. There's gonna be some regionals before the ban list, so if y'all have Dragons, you might as well have fun with that before... People talking about making up rules and shit for the deck. But this isn't a prediction video, so that's like to say. Alright, fire. Hey Jet, what did hey. you think about the March 2013 format? It was boring. Please elaborate, sir. It was just dragons and prophecy. What about before dragons and prophecies? It was Firefish, Mermails, Dino Rabbit. It was just it was more varied than two decks. This is my opinion. So why is and, that boring? Yeah. Huh? Why is that boring? How's what, the two deck format? I know, mean, like you said it was boring. What, what made it boring? Oh, right. oh before that, it was kind of good before that. It was, it was alright. And then, and then Dragons and Prophecies. I just, people, when people think about this format, they're going to think about Dragons and Prophecies. That is a true honest. statement. So, yeah. What made it boring, sir? It's just same old matchup, same old stuff all the time. And then, like, net, I don't know, I think it's mostly because of net decking. When people net, start net decking and stuff, you just see less and less creativity at locals, and then it just becomes kind of boring. That's some G shit? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, like, that's that's honestly my honest opinion. And uh, then, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. I just kind of got bored with the format the last few weeks or so. Like, I still play, but it's just, it's just not, like, you know, I, I'd rather play with Fire Fist, and I can't test with Fire Fist if, if I know they're just going to get wrecked right away. So it's kind of difficult. Because I'm trying to test with Fire Fist, and it kind of sucks. So. I understand that, mm -hmm. sir. Well, the format is ending, so this isn't supposed to be like a next format thing, but what are you going to go into the next format playing if prophecies um, cease to exist? Probably Fire Fist, Wolfberg, with Wolfberg. I'm trying to Synchro Variant, make, make big-ass Crimson Boiters, and stuff like that. I don't know. Some, some format. It's just some, some things I'm tweaking with. I, I tech in a Karma Cut. I take in this karma cut to ditch to the graveyard for uh, ditch like what's his face buffalo to the graveyard and stuff like that. And karma cut's a really good ass card. Too bad that dragons get effects when they're banished, but <laughs> but but other than that, like karma cut, like it's been testing really well against other decks. Like Mermails, it tests really well, like because you can banish. Well, it's right in front of me, but you can ban you can hit like their other targets. You can hit like they summon a megalo, banish the other megalos. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you should. Yeah, and then like. It works really well, like Fire Kings and stuff like that, and just like just knocking out multiple targets in the graveyard. Plus, I opted to take out D Prison for it because it's chainable. Yeah. So that's just another thing. So I'm just testing, testing with certain text trap cards, like old ass trap cards and stuff. Like I was thinking about Wing Blast in there, but I don't like Wing Blast as much as I like Karma Cut, just because shit is good. <laughs> and All it's right. Ulti. So. Yeah, your overall thing for this format was it was boring. Yeah, it it was it started off good with like a good mix of Fire Fist and then like other control decks like control like this. Honestly, the last few months of this format obliterated Stun. Stun isn't even a thing anymore. Like 
at least a really good thing. Like there's some really good stun players that obviously like can play it really well against them, but they lose too much advantage. Like like I like stun too, and it's just it's just hard. You know what I'm saying? It's just hard to play against these decks that just can keep plussing and keep being aggressive. You know, like they can just stay aggressive without losing much. And like stun has to really conserve. That's how stun wins is they conserve and knock out one thing at a time, but they can't because there's not just one thing at a time. So I'd like I would like for stun to get back to come back in a little bit more. Alrighty. Yeah. Thank you, Jet. All right, bye. All right, what's up, y'all? This is Thomas from Team FDS. We got everybody in the room. Kelsey. I like how he did my job, but it's okay. Aaron. And so, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about the format, bro? Um, honestly, like when the like, when, when the format started, I'm not gonna lie. I, I thought it. I thought I created a new opportunity. Um, I was really surprised. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was really surprised that Morales didn't get hit, but I mean, the fact that they came out halfway through, through, the, through, the, through their previous format, that it was kind of expected, you know what I mean? Just kind of give them some longevity. Um, then, of course, you know, there was rumors, rumors about the Dragon Rulers and, you know, Judgment, and, you know, it's Public of Judgment. And, of course, when I did my research on Public of Judgment via Jet, you know, I thought the card was fucking broken. I was like, oh my god, this is, shit's gonna break the game. And at the time, I didn't really, really know anything about the Dragon Rulers per se. And then, you know, when I'd seen how good, it, how well it was topping in Japan, and then when it actually came to the U.S., it was just a giant shocker for everybody, and I was like, I don't see the big deal, you know, because I was so ignorant of the deck when they said that it was going to be rare and then the baby's going to be common, but, you know, just seeing how it performed and seeing how it's topping, going undefeated in regionals after its first week, you know, in L.A., and then fucking, you know, Patrick Hoban winning, you know, first place nationals recently in Chicago, but, I mean, he scrubbed out at Worlds. No offense, bro. <laughs> no offense, bro. It's okay. You made it. <laughs> no, dude, yeah. No, that, that, that's a fucking... I, I haven't made Worlds yet. Fuck that shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, I mean, and then, you know, me, myself, you know, being a user of the deck, it's just, that you know, the deck the deck was really powerful. I was really surprised. Um, the one thing I didn't like about the format, and I will admit, I will admit this, the format I felt was, was definitely unbalanced. Unbalanced. Because I know in pre Welcome to Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> okay, good point. Um, because I, 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 because granted, in previous formats though, you know, th th there were multiple decks, you know, that, that, that were still prominent. You know, even the format before this particular one, you know, Mermos were running the show, you know, Fire Fist, you know, were straddling, you know, just behind, just a little bit behind. And then, you know, there was, you know, people, you know, trying to... I don't know why the fuck they were trying to do wind-ups again, but they were trying to do wind-ups without Zen Mighty. You know, Lord bless them. <laughs> and... You know, but but I felt that that was a more slower paced format, but it was also more fair. I, I didn't feel it was as fast. Yeah. And then even the format before that, um, you know, granted when when you know when it was all about wind ups and you know the insectors and the chaos dragons and the uh, dino, dino yeah. rabbit. You know what I mean? Granted, you know, wind up was probably by far the fa you know wind up and insector probably the fastest of, of those decks. But I still felt that it, it was somewhat more balanced because I mean you you at least had four choices. You know, and then the occasional people trying to run Grand Soil. But in this particular format, I thought that it, it was really either or. It was really either one deck or the other, and anything else that you played did not compare. I felt that Dragons and Prophecies were just, for this particular format, they, they, they were too fast for anything. And I felt, I me personally, like I said, I use the deck, but it, it, it completely destroyed creativity. You know, you, you, it basically means that you cannot, you cannot go to a regional or even a locals with a rogue deck or your own personalized creative idea, and if and have it be irrelevant from what prophecy and dragons are. If if you weren't playing that, you, you you're almost guaranteed to lose. You know every single time. You know it's unfortunate. I don't mean to sound like a dick, but I mean look at the fucking statistics. Dragons just took worlds. You know in Taiwan. You know after day one in worlds. You know um dragons were number one, and you know there are multiple dragon players down the list. You know nationals dragons are topping everywhere. Even not not just in the TCG but in the OCG as well. So, I mean, there are multiple reasons as to why it's just, you know, it just killed the creativity. Because you're, you're, you're seeing one or the other. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm enjoying it right now just because, you know, I, I'm a player of the deck. But I will admit that it's very unfair. And I do hope that the next ban list... Okay, before I even get into that, you know, I, this, this bullshit about, you know, people with new scans and new ban lists, it, it's fucking horse. That's all... It's bullshit. I'm tired of fucking people being like, oh, this needs to get banned and that needs to be banned. Fucking suck my dick, dude. You know, it's public of judgment. You know, the card is fucking broken. I understand it, but you're not guaranteed to open with it every time. And there, are, right, ways, right. there are ways around it. Not a banless prediction. This is just overall for the format. Okay. Stay focused. <laughs> I, I'm just saying. I know, I feel you. I understand. Judgment is about the format. <laughs> but, I mean, all in all, I mean, I felt that this was probably one of the more unhealthier formats that we've had as, as Yu-Gi-Oh players. So just, just in my opinion, you know, it, it was just a lack of creativity. You know, it was just. It, I personally feel it's just all one big bandwagon. If you want to win, 
and you know, and but if you want to be creative in this format, it's very difficult to do, especially if you're trying to play competitive. True story, true story. So, I mean, that's just my opinion of the format. I mean, hopefully things get better in the next format, but, you know, at least more healthier for the game. But, I mean, right now, it, it, it is what it is. You know, we have YCS Toronto and another regional coming up on the 24th, so. I'm excited. Whatever. You're excited? We're excited. Oh, very. I'm going right. to that shit. <clears throat> yeah. That's <laughs> Hiya, Aaron. Hiya. <laughs> <laughs> These are gonna be old. The thing about taking out new. No. Say no to what you What's up, y'all? Yeah, team FTS. Huh? This is. <laughs> you said that wrong. We should have did an intro video while we were playing tennis. Okay. What's up, y'all? Team FTS. I'm wearing a cowboy hat because my hair is looking ratchet. Anyway. <laughs> she ratchet. She ratchet. Oh my god. What's up, y'all? Team FTS is gonna.